So a lot of people are asking me, what is going on in the economy? What is happening? What's going on around the world? Why is it that all the governments seem to be acting in a strange way? Why is it that all businesses globally are having the same sort of issues? What's going on in this strange world that's that we're living in? Why are we seeing so much civil unrest? Why are we seeing so much economic boom and bust, right? Uncertainty. Why are we seeing so many assets overpriced? Why is the stock market massively overpriced relative to falling revenues and profits? Why is the housing market massively overpriced relative to the fact that hardly anyone can afford a new house? So all of this stuff's going on in the economy and people are asking me, like big picture, what's going on? So today's video is gonna be a little bit different. It's not business content. It's not like small business content, how to win more customers and leads. We're just gonna explore big picture. What is the big thing that's going on in the economy right now? The answer to this question goes right back to the year 1776 where Adam Smith launched a book called The Wealth of Nations. The Wealth of Nations is like the origins story of modern capitalism and modern economics and in that book Adam Smith talks about multiple factors of production. He talks about land, labor, capital, and enterprise being the main factors of production. So imagine those four things. We've got land, so you know, growing things on land, farming, agriculture, all of that happens on land. So if you own land, that's one factor of production. Uh, you might also wanna put a factory on the land, which involves the next one, capital. So capital is factories, machinery, materials, inputs, money, cash, right? Working capital, right? So there's the capital, which is the physical stuff that we would build things with. And then there's labor. These are the people who are gonna come into the factory and they're gonna work on the land and in the and with the capital in order to make something. And then we've got enterprise, the ability to spot opportunities, organize labor, organize capital, organize other resources, essentially take something to marketplace. So the four factors of production is land, labor, capital, enterprise. So here's what's going on. In the agricultural age, land was by far the biggest factor of production. It was so important that you had land. If you didn't have land, you were not part of the aristocracy. You were never going to become wealthy. There was no pathway from being a non-landowner to being an, a, a lord or a, a wealthy person. You had to own land. But then technology changed things. There was a technological revolution called the industrial age and two things sprung up. The need for capital and the need for labor. In fact, land hardly mattered anymore. Rather than needing vast amounts of land, we only needed a small amount of land to stick a factory on and we had to be able to raise some capital to make that factory work. We had to get some labor to make that capital work. So essentially, that was the industrial age. The industrial age was the new economy of capital and labor being the two most important ingredients. And then came some really bloody wars. And those bloody wars happened because the capitalists believed that capital was more important than labor. And the Marxists or the socialists, they believed that labor was more important than capital. And essentially there was this big fight all through the 1800s and early 1900s based on is social or labor more important, or is capital or capitalism more important? So capitalism versus socialism or communism was the big raging debate for like over a hundred years, right? So a massive issue. And it was all sparked by this technological revolution called the industrial age, which sparked a new way of looking at the economy. No longer was land important, it was all about capital and labor. So in the 1980s and the 1990s, we saw the birth of the digital economy and it's taken a while to get going, but we have another technological revolution that's taken place. And this technology of digital has once again changed the economy. How has it changed the economy? Well, actually, in the same way that the people who owned land got displaced by the industrial age, the people who have capital and labor are being displaced by the digital age. So what's happening at the moment is that the digital technology has moved the emphasis over to the fourth factor of production, which is called enterprise. So think about it like this. Today, we're seeing small teams of 10, 20, 30 people who have a small amount of capital, maybe less than a million dollars, and they're building global businesses with thousands of customers, with millions and millions of revenue, with customers all over the world, and they're doing it using social media, software, data, intellectual property, all of it is using tools that are free or almost for free. They don't need a lot of labor and they don't need a lot of capital to build a massive multinational corporation. So if you want a specific example as to what this would look like, have a look at some of my businesses. So ScoreApp is such an example of this new economy, entrepreneur driven business. We don't have offices. We have about 30 people who work all over the world. We have 
over 6,000 customers in over 150 different countries. We use lots of software, we use lots of media, we use lots of data. We've plugged that software into artificial intelligence. It's AI driven. We have a subscription model. We build in multiple different currencies. We have our customer success team in one part of the world and our developers in another part of the world. We have online meetings to create alignment. So essentially we are a business that is completely in the digital environment, what you might call the cloud. Uh, and our customers are all over the world. They're solving a problem and it doesn't matter what the geography is. So that would be a great example of what it looks like to be an entrepreneurial business in the times that we're in. Now, one of the things about this business is that it didn't require a lot of capital. We raised less than a million US dollars and it didn't require a lot of people. We're a big business with less than 30 people. So that's a classic example. Check out scoreapp.com if you wanna see a new economy business that's unfolding as we speak. You may wanna have a look at Dent Global. Dent Global has customers all over the world. We have a team that's all over the world. We have less than 30 people on the team. We do lots and lots of sales, lots and lots of revenue. We use lots of media, lots of intellectual property, lots of data, lots of software. We've plugged AI into that business and AI is a very significant part of how we deliver value. And essentially we didn't raise a lot of money. Uh, we don't have a huge team, but we have customers all over the world and we have a very fast growth business. So Dent Global, scoreapp.com, two examples of fast growth, valuable businesses that fit this description of a new economy business that is focused on enterprise rather than labor, capital, or land. It was not that long ago that Coca-Cola would have had to have raised billions of dollars to sell Coca-Cola cans all over the world. Today, small teams with little bits of funding can be selling their stuff to people all over the world, everywhere in the world. So we have a new revolution taking place. Imagine this pendulum that has swung and it's swung from land being the most important thing, capital and labor being the most important thing. Now enterprise is the most important thing. What does enterprise mean? Well, enterprise means entrepreneurial teams, entrepreneurship. So it's the ability to spot opportunities. It's the ability to set up companies. It's the ability to launch new products, the ability to get people excited about ideas, to spread those ideas. If you can do that, you can live and work from anywhere. You can make lots of money. You can have fun, freedom and flexibility. You can build something that's very, very valuable, right? You're living in a completely different universe if you know how to do enterprise, if you know how to do entrepreneurship because the world has swung and the world has changed. Why is this creating such a disruption? Well, of course, these two systems, labor and capital, fought wars to establish their positions. The entire government system is based on geography, right? Land, that was its history, and protection of capital and labor. So the entire government system revolves around those first three and doesn't really know much about this enterprise thing. It certainly doesn't know much about how to tax or regulate companies that are digital and global. For governments, these businesses are massively like out of bounds. They don't know what to do when a digital business impacts their economy, right? So they're figuring it out. So essentially we now have labor, people who work being disrupted, their jobs are no longer secure. We have capitalists who have printed lots and lots of capital into the economy with nowhere to go because we don't need it as much. And we have people who own land or real estate who aren't sure how that fits into this modern world either. However, they've discovered that their land or their real estate is a good store of wealth for capitalists, which is why it's overvalued, right? So all of this disruption is effectively messing with the original three factors of production that everyone knows and understands best. And this new thing, this new entrepreneurial world is where the frontier is. This is the frontier of wealth creation. You've got to make a move. If you currently labor, if you have a job, if you think you've got job security, you don't, you need to get entrepreneurial security. Uh, if you've got capital, you need to look at deploying that capital into entrepreneurial ventures, right? And get yourself more entrepreneurial as well. Because this economy, the pendulum is just swinging straight over to this one, which is the world of enterprise. I hope that helps you to make sense of the crazy world that we're living in. I know that sounds oversimplified. I know that that strips a lot of the emotion and the noise out, but that was the intention. If we look at the world and we look at how societies rise and fall, it's through technology and technology changes, and it's through the changing nature of these major factors of production. And that's what's happening right now. You're living through one of the most incredible times to be alive, You've got so much opportunity. The news is always gonna report the negative, but you've got the opportunity to go out there and be part of the frontier opportunity where you're gonna have more fun, more freedom, more flexibility, more wealth if you become an entrepreneur. If you enjoyed that, follow along for some more. And also you may wanna check out the book Entrepreneur Revolution, the revised edition with the lightning bolt on the front cover. And that delves into this idea in a bit more detail. Look forward to seeing you soon.